coming on to our next topic this is hiatus hernia so as we can see here these are the types of hernia there is a diagram showing the types of hernia here and as we can see here uh, in the in just a second uh, this is the first part in the there is normal esophagus and stomach And there is a diaphragm. Normally, the G junction is present below the diaphragm, and there is some portion of abdominal esophagus which is present. This abdominal esophagus generally is two centimeter in length. Okay. Now, whenever there is herniation of the G junction alone, it is known as sliding hernia. Herniation of G E junction is sliding hernia type this is hiatus hernia type 1 which is also known as the sliding hernia now whenever there is uh, the herniation of stomach whereas the ge junction is normal it is rolling type hernia or hiatus hernia type 2 or paraesophageal hernia paraesophageal hernia okay now whenever there is uh, both the herniation of g junction and stomach both g junction and stomach it is known as both g junction and stomach it is known as type 3 hiatus hernia or mixed type of hiatus hernia and there is type Four hiatus hernia also, in which any other intra-abdominal organ is also herniated into the chest. Any other intra-abdominal organ. Okay. So, what is the most common type of hiatus hernia? The question, most common question. What is the most common type of hiatus hernia? It is type one. Okay. It is the most common type. Now, what is the most common type of paraesophageal hernia? It is type 3. Most common type of paraesophageal hernia is type 3. Okay. What is the true paraesophageal hernia? It is type 2. Okay. And what is the most common? Symptom which is seen in type 1 hernia, hiatus hernia, it is reflux or GERD. Okay. This type 2 hernia, there is presence of abdominal pain because re repeatedly the stomach is going in the narrow space which is present between the esophagus and the diaphragm. Again and again the stomach is going, so there is pain. And in type 3 hernia, there is presence of both reflux and abdominal pain. So, okay. Now, the investigation of choice to detect hiatus hernia is barium swallow. Now, what is this finding? Identify the type of hiatus hernia. Okay. So, G junction is normal and there is only stomach which is going into the chest. So, this is presence of a type 2 hiatus hernia or rolling hernia or paraesophageal hernia okay or a true paraesophageal hernia okay true paraesophageal hernia okay so this is the investigation of choice barium swallow now What is the clinical features? Clinical features I have already told you. The clinical features of type 1 is mainly reflux or GERD. Type 2 is mainly abdominal pain. And type 3 is both reflux and abdominal pain okay 
Now, what is the treatment? So the treatment is we'll have to, this is again a type of hernia. We'll have to reduce the hernia first. Then we'll have to repair the defect. In this case, the defect is in between the crura and the diaphragm. So this repair is also known as the cruroplasty or the diaphragmatic repair. So we'll have to reduce the hernia. We'll have to repair the defect. And in case if the defect is large, we'll have to place a mesh also to cover the defect. Along with that, we prefer doing a fundoplication. Okay. So the treatment is hiatus hernia repair. with fundoplication. Okay. Now, due to this repeated herniation, there is development of an ulcer. Okay. So, we can see here, this is esophagus and this is stomach. Due to this repeated sliding hernia, there is presence of an ulcer here along the lesser curvature this is known as riding ulcer or cameroon's ulcer okay so this riding ulcer or cameroon's ulcer is associated with sliding height ascertain What is the location? Near GE junction and along the lesser curvature. Okay. What is the good thing about this hernia? It heals after the hiatus hernia repair it heals spontaneously after hiatus hernia repair okay so this is regarding riding ulcer now there is presence of some other ulcers also into the stomach these ulcers are stress ulcer stress ulcer or stress gastritis okay this is also known as uh, cushing ulcer or curling ulcer okay so why I am discussing this Cushing ulcer and curling ulcer here along with this topic. This is important to understand because the most common site of these ulcers is also stomach. Okay. And the name is almost similar. The Cameroon ulcer, Cushing ulcer, curling ulcer. So it is very easy to forget about these ulcers. Okay. So this curling ulcers, it occurs in burn patients. And this Cushing ulcer is seen in head injury patients. But the pathophysiology of these two is stress ulcers or stress gastritis. Okay. So, how to remember? Burn causes hairs to curl. This is the way I have remembered when I was preparing for my PG entrance that burn causes hairs to curl. So the curling ulcer is associated with burn patient. So indirectly, this curling ulcer is ruled out from the options and you can look out for other options. Okay. So what is the most common site? Stomach. Where in the stomach? So the maximum acid production occurs from the fundus. Okay. So the most common site in stomach is fundus. Okay. 